what Genghis Khan did with the women he took in captivity. We already know he was one of history's greatest warriors, but new evidence suggests Genghis Khan fathered hundreds of children. A man nearly ruled the earth 700 years ago. He conquered half of the known globe and instilled men with dread that lasted for millennia. Before we start this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel to see more historical videos like this. There were many wives and concubines of Genghis Khan, as was common for powerful Mongol men of the time. Wives and concubines were frequently acquired from conquered territory, and in the case of Genghis Khan, sometimes whole empires, and the women enrolled as either his wives or concubines were often princesses or queens that were either taken captive or gifted to him. Genghis Khan gave several of his high-status wives their own ordos or camps to live in and manage. Each camp also contained junior wives, concubines, and even children. It was the job of the Kashyyyk, or Mongol Imperial Guard, to protect the yurts of Genghis Khan's wives. The guards had to pay particular attention to individual yurt and camp in which Genghis Khan slept which could change every night as he visited different wives. When Genghis Khan set out on his military conquests, he usually took one wife with him and left the rest of his wives and concubines to manage the empire in his absence. Throughout his life, he has given several titles such as Mighty Manslayer, Scourge of God, and Perfect Warrior. We know him better as Genghis Khan. So starts Harold Lamb's 1927 book Genghis Khan, Emperor of All Men, which is still the best-selling account of the Mongolian warrior 80 years later. But because there is no proof of it at the time, Lamb did not mention that Genghis Khan might also lay claim to being the world's most prolific lover. Scientists from the Russian Academy of Science think the cruel king had 16 million male descendants surviving today after analyzing tissue samples from tribes surrounding Mongolia, implying that he must have fathered hundreds if not thousands of children. And as geneticists concur, it can only be explained by Genghis Khan's policy of snatching the most attractive women seized throughout his brutal conquests. The Mongol victory feasts were legendary. While abducted ladies were paraded for inspection, Genghis Khan and his commanders would rip into enormous chunks of virtually uncooked horse meat. Genghis Khan picked from among the highest ranking women. He preferred women with tiny noses, rounded hips, long silky hair, red lips, and sweet voices. He appraised their attractiveness in carrots, and if they fell below a particular amount, they were taken to his commander's tents. On one occasion, his lieutenants were casually arguing what the most enjoyable aspect of life was. When their commander delivered his own highly felt opinion, the consensus was leaning toward the sport of falconry. The greatest delight is to conquer your adversaries and chase them before you, to plunder them of their money and see those nearest to them in tears, to ride their horses and clutch their wives and daughters to your bosom, he declared. Despite his desire for women, the geneticist's conclusions appear to be unattainable. They claim that Genghis had more children than anybody else in history. How could 16 million males living in a region extending from China to the Middle East possess the same genetic footprint? That large expanse, however, perfectly corresponds to Genghis Khan's domain, across which he led his 13th century Mongol forces on the biggest orgy of looting, rape, and massacre known to history. It was an incredible accomplishment done in under 20 years. Genghis governed the kingdom twice the size of Rome when he died in 1227, and it transformed the globe forever. When he unified the turbulent Mongolian tribes in 1206 under the title of Genghis Khan, or universal ruler, he adopted the name Timujin. 
He and his pony-mounted archers then embarked on a furious campaign of foreign conquest and devastation. His forces ravaged northern China, Samarkand and other famed Silk Road towns, as well as much of distant Russia. Genghis and his armies devastated any town that stood up to them, murdering or enslaving males before distributing captive women and raping them. Only when Genghis Khan or one of his generals received permission could the raiding of enemy areas commence, writes Russian historian George Vernadsky. Once it began, the commander and the average soldier had equal rights with the exception that attractive young ladies had to be turned up to Genghis Khan. Khan frequently took joy in sleeping with the wives and daughters of opposing leaders. His army leaders thought he had remarkable sexual abilities since he slept with so many women every night. He and his hordes utilized bone-crushing brutality to kill off all men who stood in his way. Thus, there was never a scarcity of women. An ambassador to the city claimed a year after he and his hordes stormed Beijing in 1214 that the bones of the dead had formed mountains, that the earth was slick from human fat, and that several of his own entourage had perished from illnesses carried by the rotting remains. When Genghis and his forces besieged towns, the residents were forced to resort to cannibalism. Genghis Khan died on August 18, 1227, during a war against the Tangut people of northeastern China. The cause of his death is unknown. Many believe he fell off his horse owing to old age and physical exhaustion, while others believe he was slain by the Tangut. His Mongol Empire ruled or briefly conquered substantial portions of modern-day China, Mongolia, Russia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Iraq, Iran, Turkey, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Moldova, South Korea, North Korea, and Kuwait. His sons and heirs presided over his kingdom and may have utilized their positions to create his own vast harems, especially if they continued in their father's footsteps. Genghis Khan seemed to value honesty and loyalty to himself highly from subjects. Genghis Khan put some trust in his generals, such as Mukali, Jibi, and Subude, and gave them free reign in battles. He allowed them to make decisions on their own when they embarked on campaigns on their own very far from the Mongol Empire capital Karakoram. An example of Genghis Khan's perception of loyalty is written in the secret history of the Mongols, that one of his main military generals, Jibi, had been his enemy and shot his horse. When Jibi was captured, he said that he shot his horse and that he would fight for him if he spared his life, or would die if that's what he wished. Genghis Khan spared Jibi's life. Jibi betrayed his former commander and he became one of the powerful, successful generals of Genghis Khan. It's not entirely clear what Genghis Khan's personality was truly like, as with any historical person without an autobiography, but his personality and character were molded by the many hardships he faced when he was young and in unifying the Mongol nation. Genghis Khan fully embraced the Mongol people's nomadic way of life according to his quotations, and did not try to change their customs or beliefs. As he aged, he seemed to become increasingly aware of the consequences of numerous victories and expansions of the Mongol Empire, including the possibility that succeeding generations might choose to live a sedentary lifestyle according to quotations attributed to him in his later years. He urged future leaders to follow the Yasa and to refrain from surrounding themselves with wealth and pleasure. He was known to share his wealth with his people and awarded subjects handsomely who participated in campaigns in the book The Secret History of the Mongols.